Hi, this is Dave with Beyond Guitars, and welcome back. Uh, we are still working on Mike's dad's banjo, this uh, Gibson Master Tone. We've got two main areas to address here. We've got the neck, which involves quite a number of processes, and we've got uh, the metal parts. So uh, we're going to start with these. Today I've got uh, all the little things I took out of the pot, uh, the coordinator rods, the tailpiece, the armrest, and all of the pot pieces right here. So we're going to clean these up and get them taken care of first. And then I guess in the next video we'll probably be addressing the neck and we'll be starting on that. So we'll get going on this right now, right after this. Okay, so just a quick review of what we've got here. We've got the coordinator rods. They're a little grungy. Uh, the armrest is somewhat tarnished and, and dirty looking, so we'll clean that up. It's in good condition. Uh, the tone ring has been under wraps all these years, uh, for the most part, except for parts of the skirt. Uh, but uh, you can see how clean and bright that looks. That is nickel plated. Uh, we've also got the... Uh, the flange uh, needs a little help and some cleanup will do, do on the on the hoop. The tuners that were on the banjo, um, I found two others that were not, and those were in storage and they're clean. Uh, these are a little a little grimy, so we're going to clean them up, but not the same way we'll be doing the other pieces because these are machinery and you don't want to uh, get these too wet. Uh, we've got other pieces here like the hooks and nuts; they'll need to be cleaned up. And so forth. Oh, I found the key. Actually, the key to the case was uh, in the in the bag or box of other parts. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> that old case. We still have the key to it. I checked it. It works. It's actually the right key. So uh, let's get to the sink and clean up everything. We're not the tuners in the sink. So we'll take everything else over there and uh, and get these all cleaned up. Now the key is that I don't want to scratch anything. So. Um, the cloth, I'm just going to use a cloth to uh, wipe the parts down and I'm going to start with some Dawn, uh, some Dawn, just to get it degreased and uh, try and scrub the parts just physically uh, with a little detergent and take care of it that way. So let's start with um, maybe the hoop, that's probably the worst one right there. Keep the water nice and warm. One reason I like to keep it warm is uh, in order to um, facilitate a faster dry time and you can see already how much brighter things are just using a soft terry cloth to a towel hand, hand towel here and that's it just keep scrubbing away and I don't really need to waste the water well, we've had a lot of rain here in California this year uh, but we've been very water conscious uh, you know, for years now, basically, it's been a very long time. The inside of this had uh, collected a lot of dirt, so I want to make sure that's really scrubbed well. Again, I would absolutely warn you, don't use anything abrasive. No, uh, no kind of abrasive uh, pot cleaners. No, stain, no steel wool. Steel wool is horrible. It will just ruin your stuff. I mean, people think, oh, you polish with steel wool. <laughs> nope. We'll go over polishing when I do the refinishing, but uh, steel wool is not part of that process. That's for sure. It's, it's terrible. Now, if you can, if you can see as I'm washing off the detergent, whoa, that is a little hot. Oh, okay. Uh, as I'm washing off the detergent, it still looks dull, but at least it's not dirt. It is now the tarnish. So that's kind of the second stage in this cleaning process. So we're just going to go through all the parts and do the same thing. Just get some Dawn on everything. And scrub them up. So no real rocket science here. Maybe we'll just cut forward.
Okay, so back at the bench here, uh, we have um, my ultrasonic cleaner, and that's going to be instrumental in cleaning these small parts. Uh, what I have in here right now is just some warm water. Uh, what I want to add to it, and I found to be quite effective and harmless to everything, is a little vinegar. And again, we're going to use the Dawn. So that will degrease and uh, try and get all the other crud off of there. Just a little bit of Dawn in there. We'll stir it up. And that's all we need. The ultrasonic action will pretty much do the rest. I'm going to put about a quarter cup in there. And that increases the acidity just enough to help remove any corrosion. And it won't take it all off, but that's kind of the goal. Now I've got all these separated, but really no point in that. Uh, they're all going to go in here. Uh, I like to use the tray, at least just to keep it off the bottom. And uh, they're all going to go in. So some of the stuff is too small, it'll fall through. But the ultrasonic action works. No matter what I think it's going to do, it just does it. So it is set for 180 seconds, I guess that is, and we'll just let it run, and uh, we'll see how it goes. And there we go, that was just one round of ultrasonic cleaning. And I take a look at them, I can see the water's actually dirtied up, so it does work. These things are pretty amazing how well they work. Uh, we've got some shine on these parts already. Um, yeah, you know, there is some rust on some of the hooks. I'm not concerned about it. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm going to go one more round and just stir them up, make sure I've got a new side of things presented, kind of like frying in a frying pan. Flip them over. And uh, I've got the little heater on here too. Boy, that's that's hot. So, one more round. Okay, so we've pretty much finished the cycles, two cycles on the um, on the ultrasonic cleaner. So uh, I'm going to unplug it, let it cool down a little bit. We'll leave it there until it cools down and I can handle them. Okay, well I'm back and uh, I have a little confession to make. I uh, you had to adjust my camera for the lighting in the sink. I'm not sure I did a very good job at that, but what I really blew was when I came back here and I started uh, shooting the polishing section and the white balance was completely completely uh, horrible so uh, here's a shot of, <laughs> of what it looked like so now I've actually uh, got my white balance figured out so um, <clears throat> I uh, have already polished some of these things I want to go over how I polish things uh, don't really spend a lot of time with it so this will go pretty quickly We'll start with things, uh, the bigger items like the armrest. This is a product I uh, like a lot. Uh, this is a Meguiar's product. This is available at auto parts stores and uh, it's for polishing uh, all kinds of metal. You know, I've watched a lot of uh, videos on reviews of polishing compounds and uh, this one came out high on all of them but not on top of any of them. It wasn't number one. So you choose what you like but I've had marvelous success with it. You can see I've used quite a bit of it um, but it doesn't take much to, to do this job. So um, I like to do things by hand if I can and on the smaller items I usually do anyway but I do have a little mini buffer here on my drill. It's all black from uh, the tarnish that it's taken off, but it's a cotton buffer. And uh, so I'll show you how I use that <clears throat> on things like uh, the bigger items like the tone ring. So um, basically all I do is take a little bit of the polish on my finger. And yeah, your, your fingers get pretty dirty from this. And I give it a nice little coating on the sides I want to polish. You can even use your fingers to polish the parts and you can see it's coming off on my fingers already as that black color you saw on my buffer but uh, you know it's a little bit tough to get off your skin probably not real good for me the uh, these shop rags I get these at Harbor Freight and they're they're like paper towels but they're tough and um, they're pretty coarse actually but they don't scratch but I like the toughness and uh, they polish really well uh, I think the microfiber is great for dusting and doing maybe a final polish or a dry polish, but for this, these little shop rags are really good. I mean, they just work really great. And as you'll see, it just takes a little bit of rubbing here. 
little bit of elbow grease and uh, you see that even shined it up a little more here <clears throat> how shiny is that that's pretty nice so uh, it's nice to have a good product it's a brand I trust that Meguiar's uh, virtually everything they make I, I uh, have had great success with and when we come to the final finish on the neck uh, I use another Meguiar's product that's proven really well um, suited for this work so uh, let's see here yeah I just give this a nice buff with this paper towel and there are some fine pits in the metal because it's just that way and this is almost big enough for me to want to use the little buffer you know big buffing wheel doesn't work real well with these little parts so it's easy to get them to fly across the room or slam into the floor so I really like uh, I'd probably leave the compound on here and do a little bit of buffing with the wheel and that definitely speeds things up gets a lot done now be careful with edges if you have an edge and the wheel is turning this way you want the surface that you're coming up to the edge on to be coming away from it like this and not not the other way because then it'll catch the edge and throw your part it'll just throw it um, and depending on the speed you're running your wheel but here's a case where I don't want to get too close to that edge going that way so I'll go the opposite direction and it, it buffs off the edge not on toward the edge so that's kind of the secret for that and that takes nothing more than just a a minute or so uh, with the with the hoop what I would do with this is just give it a coating with my finger all the way around which I did and uh, you can see it's nice and shiny now it's not brand new so this is where I would say this isn't a restoration project uh, restoration would be to strip the you know I guess to strip the plating and grind it smooth and then plate it again and all that now this is just uh, maintenance and repair is what we're doing and uh, you know the skirt on the tone ring is mostly tarnished along this bottom edge and you can see how nice and shiny it is now from my buffing treatment and I did use the wheel on this a little bit uh, it came out very nice uh, the bottom edge of this was pretty tarnished you can see there are some pits in it um, but it's not bad and uh, it certainly came out very shiny here's an area with with some pitting right there and that's that's gonna stay it has to uh, but that's how that all works now here's a question for you guys who might be better Gibson experts than myself uh, this tail piece came to me on the banjo and I, I've tried to find what was the original tail piece on this banjo it's a 62 RB 250 and um, I think this is correct even though it's so much shinier than the other parts were it's pretty comparable now so you know the color is about right I think it's a keeper it looks like nickel plate to me that's just still in very good condition I didn't really have to polish this I just gave it a little wipe and uh, yeah it's all it was already already nice so the thing the thing is here this is what's tedious here is the next part it's all the little parts these pieces here are um, a lot of little things and I'll just give you a brief rundown these are really the only steel pieces on the banjo and uh, they do have a tendency to rust a little bit and they're not too bad hooks I've got a million hooks I could replace these but I'm keeping this banjo original that has a tiny bit some have uh, more than others but uh, you know it's just going to be the way it stays but they are clean the nuts however are brass and they are not rusty of course and I I can tell everything is steel or brass by the magnet got a little magnet here and it won't pick up anything that's made of brass or bronze but it will pick up the steel hooks and screws so for these all I do is take a little bit on my fingers and uh, just kind of coat it you know honestly I can polish these just with my fingers 
if you just rub enough polish on it, you can get this thing. I didn't actually shine these on the uh, on the failed video. You can see how black it's turning, and my finger, it's all that tarnished nickel coming off. And now we have a shinier hook than we had before. So that's tedious, going through all 24 of these in that fashion. Um, again, I, I, I don't really like to use my finger, but it will polish them. And that's about the, as good as we can do here. Now, when I'm through with these, what I like to do is put a little um, oil on, on, a, on a new rag. I'll take a new um, paper towel or shop towel, and I've got mineral oil in this. This is from the drugstore, actually. It's just pure USP mineral oil, and uh, I like it because it doesn't discolor anything. It works on fretboards uh, if you don't have any other oil like like a lemon oil actual mineral oil is used to um, treat the wood on butcher blocks because it's a food grade product so I'll, it doesn't go rancid or anything just put a little bit on the towel and what I'll do is just get a little bit on the threads because you want these to operate smoothly so I'll get some oil on the when I put the head on the banjo and I'm tensioning the rods, the hooks, some call them brackets. I think Stuart McDonald calls these brackets. Not sure why, but anyway, whatever you call them, a little bit of a thin coat of oil on the threads. And I'll spin them to get the oil actually down in the threads. Just running across it, I don't think is quite adequate. So I'll spin them to get the oil in there. So when you're tensioning the head, it makes for a nicer, even t uh, tension, and you don't hear as much creep on those nuts. If you've ever tensioned a head, you might notice that as you're turning the turning the wrench, uh, sometimes they'll start making these creeping sounds on you. They'll go creak, 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 like this, and I can't imitate it, but I, I try and avoid that by oiling these threads a little bit. So. I think I've covered everything, and I told you I was going to show you another product that I use. This is a Renaissance wax, and a lot of people are using this not only on musical instruments, but they'll use them on high-value uh, collector guns and uh, special antiques, hardware of any kind. Just give it a coating, and it says here that uh, fine watches and all kinds of things used by the British Museum and Restoration Specialists International to revive and protect valuable furniture, leather, paintings, metals, marble, ivory, etc. Even ivory. Interesting. Freshens colors and imparts a sheen. So that's, uh, that's going to help prevent any more corrosion. So I'm going to treat it like other wax and just let it dry a little bit before I go on. <clears throat> My voice is falling apart. Not sure what that's about. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, I used to actually be on the radio. That's a, in a former career. I was a radio broadcaster. But I didn't sound like this. I'm not sure what's going on. Anyway, um, we're just going to give it a little secondary wipe down. Yeah, and that does kind of give it a nice little sheen. A little bit different than without it. So that's going to be my final treatment on all the metal parts here. Um, can't go wrong with some Renaissance wax. Okay, well that's going to do it for me today. Uh, I've got a little more polishing to do, but I'll save you the pain of watching all of that. Uh, that's not really fun to watch, but now you know uh, how I do it. And uh, we'll get this all finished up here pretty quick, but I'm a little behind on the videos, so I want to start the next one as soon as I can and get that out. And we've got, we've got a lot of work to do on the neck. So the neck is the very next thing to do. We're going to start uh, stripping, pulling frets. Uh, you know, we've got a, a lot of stuff to do on the neck. So we'll go through all that next time. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss the next episode here at Beyond Guitars.